Hello, Cancer. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Cancer is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, if there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Cancer, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Okay, Knight of Swords. Uh, you're very decisive right now. Um, I feel like you are, um, you're in this really kind of new energy, I think, where you, you know exactly what you want, you know exactly how to get it, and you know exactly what words to use. I feel like, I feel like you're very decisive, you know, like, um, like um, <clears throat> you're, you're saying a lot with very few words, right? And it's, it's more of, um, you're more geared toward action, right? But communicating, communicating your intentions in a way that's very straightforward and very blunt and very, not wishy-washy. It's not, you're not beating around any bushes. You're not tiptoeing around anything. I think you're very blunt, very straight up, very to the point. You're somebody that likes directness. You like people to tell you what's what and not be too delicate with it. Just, no, just tell me, right? Whatever it is, whatever you're trying to say, just spit it out, right? You're not going to hurt my feelings. And I think that that's a, um, um, that's a problem with the people's perception of us cancers, right? Is that uh, I think a lot of the time people are too delicate with you because they don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't want you to go shrink back into your shell. You know, and so maybe it takes people a while to really kind of say gently what they need to say, where it's just like, I wish you would just tell me in the fewest possible words what you mean, you know? So I feel like that is, oh, that's the wrong button. I feel like that's your, your kind of, uh, your vibe right now. And I feel that there's this kind of, there's this confidence in you. And I, I feel too with the, with the Knight of, of Swords that, you're eager to get started, so it's kind of like you're, you're getting kind of antsy and you're like, just, just say it. Just say what you mean because I've got all these other things I want to do. Um, it, it kind of doesn't matter what they tell you. They could be telling you that they're leaving. Okay, fine. I just got, you're, you're very excited about something. I feel a real glow from you right now. Uh, but let's see what else is going on with that card. Aha, now we've got a queen of cups. I think you found something. Okay, I think that you've discovered something in your life, <clears throat> in your, in your, uh, in your heart, really, something that has inspired you in such a way I think we we've not seen in a long time, um, something that is really making you glow. I think you found something that's meant for you. You found either like your place, your path. You found where you belong in life. You found your your person, your counterpart, you found, I don't know. I don't know what this is, but I feel like you've been looking for it for a long time. And I feel like here it is. I feel like you've discovered that. Um, I'm expecting a tower card here somewhere. I feel like you've had a major breakthrough emotionally. And it's almost like you've, you've seen something that was here all along. And you finally have seen it. You know, like really seen it. And I think it's inspiring you in, in this really outstanding way. And I think that's why we have this very decisive, very to the point, very direct, very blunt. Let's, whatever it is, let's just say it real quick. Get out of the way. I've got stuff to do. You've got some. And I, I kind of wonder if maybe you just, this is something for you personally, right? Um, so I just kind of feel like it's, I feel like you've got this smile on your face and nobody really knows why. You found something, right? Something I think 
inside of you that you've been looking for for a long time. There's an eight uh, of pentacles under it. You're, you're somebody very cautious, you know, too. As much as we are kind of enthusiastic and excited and we're ready to get started on something, this, this really could be that you found like the, you found your soulmate. You found your path. You found your one true love in life. Whether it's a person romantically, whether it's a, um, you know, a, a purposeful uh, career or meaningful endeavor, a project, a, a something. You found something, it could be a good piece of music or something. Maybe your favorite uh, artist released a new album or something and you just got it and you found it and you, you just can't wait to get home and listen to it or enjoy it or do it or read it or whatever. And so whatever this conversation is, whatever this, whatever people are, are trying to tell you, it's just like, just, just tell me because I've got this thing that I want to go enjoy. You know, you're in love with something and you're glowing, right? But at the same time, with the Eight of Pentacles, you're very cautious. And I think this is maybe why you're, you're kind of, um, I don't think you're telling a lot of people. I think that you realize that you've, you've still got a long way to go for something. Um, you have the right kind of nurturing energy about you right now. If this is your garden, if this is your, this is your baby, this is your plant, this is your tomato bush, whatever, you're giving it just the right amount of water. You're putting it out in the sunlight, and maybe that's why you're so kind of, I feel this eagerness, like you gotta get home to do something. Maybe you've gotta go home and you wanna be with this thing. You wanna nurture it and take care of it. Maybe you got a new puppy, you know? Um, but I feel like there's that kind of, there's that kind of love in you. And it's that inspiring kind of love where it's just you, you can't wait to go be with this, this energy. Um, you are someone who can really take care of, of things. Okay, now maybe it's plants, maybe it's pets, maybe it's people, it's relationships, whatever it is. You know kind of how to be, you, you've kind of got this maternal energy about you. Okay, and it doesn't, it's not gender specific. I don't care about that. It's, it's, this, it's this innate ability that you have to really take care of something. And you really have this love in you that you want to take care of it. And seeing something grow, even if it's just your tomato plant or something, seeing something grow and then be healthy um, is so meaningful to you. Right? You've got that kind of, I don't know, I don't know what it is. This is really, this is powerful stuff though. In the background position, well, eight of cups. See, now we've got something that is growing, something that is healing, something that we are taking care of. And maybe it's because in your history, in your past, it wasn't always like that. Okay, eight of pentacles, good. Eight of cups, well, could be better. Okay, maybe the eight of Maybe the Eight of Pentacles was a history for you where you weren't so healthy, you know? And maybe this is, um, maybe what this is, maybe it's not a person or a place or a thing. Maybe it's just, maybe it's, um, maybe you're so enthusiastic about uh, your well-being, right? Think of somebody who is, um, who's on the health kick, you know, they, they call it, where you're just, you're very much, um, you're, you're focused on, let's go to the gym, I'm exercising, I'm riding a bike, I'm eating well, I'm eating right, I'm doing my breathing exercises, like I'm really focused on all that kind of well-being stuff. And a lot of different things, you know? And this is that excitement that I just, I can't wait, I can't wait to get home and cook my healthy meal. I can't wait to get done with what I'm doing here so I can go be in the gym, you know, or I can go for that walk. It's like, we're just very excited to, to be alive. You know, your aura is just, it's really glowing right now. And I feel like this is really a powerful, powerful reading for you. Powerful, but it's not hurried. It's not anxious. It's not rushing, right? This is something that, um, You've shifted focus here. There was a time in your life where either emotionally, maybe physically or spiritually, you weren't well, right? And maybe this was a history where uh, you didn't quite get the, um, the care or the nourishment that you needed, either as a child or as an adult, through a relationship, maybe through, 
you know, our upbringing, right? The Eight of Cups is, is the need for things to get better. This is that state of things where I know I need to improve my well-being, be it physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. Okay? So I think there was a time where you didn't feel that you were healthy. I don't know what else to call it, right? But now I think you're very much focused on that. And it's very easy for you to, again, I feel this decisive kind of energy. With the Knight of Swords, it's very easy for you to choose health rather than this. To choose the well option versus the unwell option. Okay? And so that's in, in everything, in relationships, in what we choose to consume, what we take into our own spirits and souls and, and into our psyche, into our bodies. Very discerning. Right? Very able to say yes and no. I will take that. I will not take that. And it's, it's become kind of automatic, making the right choices, making the healthy choices. Now, I'm not, just, I'm not talking about nutrition necessarily or, or exercise, but that might be part of it. But generally, in life, choosing those things that are going to increase your, your health and wellness and prevent or recover from unwellness. I'm not a physician. I'm not a doctor. This isn't a medical reading. But I feel like this decisiveness, I feel like it's easier to stay on this Eight of Pentacles path when we're just making those decisions automatically. The more we think about it, the more we start to kind of say, well, gosh, all that ice cream sure sounds good right now, you know? Um, but if we just say, no, I'm gonna have a salad, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna walk now, we just, we make the decision, we're up and we're doing it. The more time we kind of think about it, less likely we're gonna be to do it. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm using going for a walk as the example, okay? Why is this all taking place now? Queen of Cups, something has changed in you. There is now this kind of um, emotional transparency, emotional honesty. I think that you have a renewed sense of self-love and self-care. To me, this is radical self-love, radical self-care. And it's, it's making the, the difference. It's making the change between Eight of Cups and Eight of Pentacles, okay? That's what, that's what loving yourself is going to do. See the next card? Ten of swords. That makes sense. Because I think you're somebody who's ready for a change. You're somebody who is ten of swords. I'm ready to just all that old, that old stuff, the old habits, the old way of doing things, gone. I'm ready to dismantle all of that. There is this breakthrough, I think, in, in this self-love and self-care and, and appreciation and self-acceptance, radical self-acceptance, radical self-care, that is saying, I'm, I'm ready to allow that water energy to wash away all these kind of bad habits and all these, these old patterns of behavior and patterns of thinking, the things that we used to believe about ourselves or the things that we used to believe were true about us. I'm ready to focus on things that are going to heal me and help me and uh, nurture me. And I, as I nurture something else, I don't know. I think there is something also in your life that you're caring for. And maybe it's because I, I feel that there's something kind of outside of you or more objective. But it could be that we're looking at our bodies that way or we're looking at our, our emotions that way, our heart. And we're thinking, it's my responsibility to care for that. You know, it's kind of like maybe we're looking in the mirror. And we're thinking, it's my responsibility to, to take care of that. And that's what I'm going to do. And now the decision in every moment becomes easy for you. And the Ten of Swords, this is, this is your willingness to try to overcome these past cycles, these patterns of behavior, these beliefs. Right? Because they were, they were a cage. We were locked in there. Every time we get that Ten of Swords, I think of that bird cage. You know, and uh, sometimes the bird thinks it's happy, and it is maybe in, on some level. Um, but I think that you're you're learning to take these bars apart, to dismantle this cage, so that you can be 
fully yourself, that you can spread your wings and you can become who you're meant to become, that you can fulfill your potential in life, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of that stuff. Final card for the path of the dove, the two of wands. Very, very nice. So if this is all stuff in potential, this is you now taking action. See, we've got fire, water, air, and earth. Now we have everything we need. We need a major arcane. I'm sure we'll get some on the path of the serpent here. The two of wands, though, this is, you know, actually implementing these things. You have this decisive attitude. You have this, this glow about you, this love, this enthusiasm. This is you now making those decisions and taking those actions. This is you realizing what is in your power to control and what is not. And if it's not something you can control, so be it. Fine, right? Uh, let's say our genetics or our past, our history. We can't change that. We can't control that. What we control is our decisions now, our rea reactions and responses to the world, to events, either coming from within or from outside of us. And that's all we can control. And I think this is, you know, you're, you're coming to terms with that and you're learning to focus on those things that you can influence and you can change. You can't change everything. And if it's not within your power to change, I think that there is a release from that burden for you. And I think that makes things a lot easier. And especially when we think of this radical self-acceptance. There are things about me that I can't change. No point in being weighed down by that. I have to accept those things. And if I, if I accept everything about myself, then I'll learn what things I can work on, what things I can improve, and I'll work on those things. But the other things, how tall I am, you know, uh, the shape of my face or so, I can't change those things. So I'm not going to worry about those. You know, I can't change all the experiences that I've been through in my life, everything that's ever hurt me in life. I can't change those things. But I can change how I interact with those things or how I utilize those experiences. I can choose to accept me and my history and make positive choices going forward. This is all very, very good. Uh, let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is the random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. I'm gonna go down right here. Jimbo, the Lizard King, AKA Mr. Lizard. We'll be right there on top of that card. If you have a prediction for the card, put it in the comments. Uh, we're going to go to the path of the serpent now. And as I do this, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It's totally free. It doesn't cost anything. And uh, leave a comment for me. I appreciate all the comments. It really is my favorite part of all of this, is hearing from all of you. Yeah. And I, I thank you. So, general energy there's the major arcana that we're looking for. This is the death card. This is the Scorpio energy. Um, it's a card of transformation. It's a card of letting go what no longer works for us. Letting go of something that has already kind of expired and decayed and has gone back to where it came from, right? It's kind of the, the Ten of Swords. We're, we're letting something fall away from us so that we can reclaim that energy. All the time and, and energy that we spend thinking or worrying or judging or believing things about ourselves or about the world around us, we can recycle that energy, that time, and we can put it towards something that we can indeed influence and control and change, at least to some degree. The death card, you are aware that you can't really change anything. Well, wait, I thought you just said that I can change things. Um, we can, the best we can try to do is nudge the river a little bit, okay? The death card reminds us that there is a constant force in the universe of change, of development, of evolution, um, and we can't control that. We can't, we, we try to slow it down, right? But we're all getting older, you know? We're all human beings, at least I think most of us. And we, we can't stop time. We can't rewind it. Okay? We can't stop it either. Sometimes we try to slow it down. 
you know, I put the, the sunblock on my face, you know, so I can try to slow down that aging process a little bit. We try to eat healthy and drink water so we can try to be as strong as possible, as healthy as possible for as long as possible, but we can't stop it. And neither can we really change our fate or our destiny. It's kind of like we're all going to end up somewhere specific. We can't change that destination, but we can have a little bit of play in how we get there, right? Or what shape we're in when we get there, right? So in some ways, the death card is you realizing those things in life that you cannot change, that you cannot prevent or slow down, that maybe we can nudge things a little bit. And that really speaks to the two of wands, right? If the two of wands are those things that are within your dominion, within your power to control, then the death card is that fundamental force of life that really you cannot control. So we're, we're lucky that we can operate our little two of wands in that big universal spiritual picture of the death card. All right, and then this is just us kind of doing what we can, thinking that we can, um, that we can make we can make a difference in our lives, right? And I think that we have to accept both of these: that we're operating within the spiritual energy, within this universal force of change. Now, the death card is is a scary card. It's called death, right? Um, but really, it should be a card called change, or even rebirth, or even evolution, or transformation, right? And I think that in the large part. What we can do to be a part of this process is to learn to let go of things that the universe is taking out of our lives. We don't want to cling to things that are dying and decaying and, and flowing away from us. Right? We don't, the river's flowing that way. We don't try to scoop it back this way. So it's, a, it's an acceptance. It's a letting those things go and reclaiming that energy and, and you know, the universe, nature is the great recycler, right? Uh, and, and we have to kind of take a cue from that. We can be part of the process. We can be maybe co-creators or we could be the apprentice to the universe, you know. And we learn from nature. So we recycle too. We reclaim energy. We let things go so that we can have that energy to move in the right direction. This is your general energy right now. And oh boy, the environment, your relationships, 10 of pentacles. I think that you are aspiring to fill your life with the very best things that you can imagine, right? The 10 of pentacles is not money. I mean, money is maybe one of these coins. But there's a lot of things in here, love, friendship, um, you know, devotion, spirituality, there's pain and suffering, there's, you know, there's joy and pleasure, there's all, everything that you can imagine is in this card. This card encapsulates every other card of the tarot. Every energy in the universe is crystallized into this. You have to know what this is for you. And what I like to say is that the Ten of Pentacles is the picture of your best life. This is the representation of your idea of wealth. Prosperity, abundance, perfect, perfection, right? You have to know what this is. Get out your sheet of paper, get out your pencil, draw a picture of your best life. Or better yet, in the comments, tell me what wealth means to you. What is your absolute perfect picture of life? What things are included in there? And this is what you're making the decision to, to move toward with this death energy you know, using the, using the momentum of the universe, not fighting against it, right? Moving with the river, maybe trying to nudge it a little ways, but moving with it, with the current. So now with this radical self-love and radical self-acceptance, you are radically going after everything you deserve. We love ourselves, we accept ourselves, we know that we deserve to at least strive toward the perfection of our lives, the perfection of your, your art, right? your work, your path. And so I think that you're making a lot of these choices, not only with, with relationships, with the people in your life, but with your own activities. What you're taking in is nourishment, right? A lot of like, a lot of very decisive choices now. 
Yeah. And it's all geared toward this. And we're looking to manifest heaven on earth. Our picture perfect life. You know? And things, things, things have changed in you. You're really, you're really glowing right now. And there's this motivation. There is this commitment, this devotion, this enthusiasm to create the best kind of life that we can. Now, we know that we may never get a 10, a perfect 10, and that's okay. But what is the difficulty for you? Another 10. Maybe the difficulty here is uh, realizing that we have got so much energy and enthusiasm in us. We've got so much creative idea, so much creative force and vitality. We've got so much of this fire energy but we know it's going to be an imperfect manifestation. And maybe that is the difficulty for you, right? We think of the, the tens, especially fire and earth in the tens. This is that magical, creative, divine circuit of, of creation and of manifestation, right? Fire to earth, idea to implementation, impulse to behavior. It's that direct electrical circuit, right? Fire and earth connected. Um, this is together, these two cards, and the obstacle for you is accepting the fact that it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, that no matter how well insulated your system is, there's gonna be a little bit of energy loss. We think of, I don't know, um, I don't know if it's mechanics or, or what we're talking about, if any, any kind of power generation or, um, I don't know, thermodynamics, I guess, right? If, any, if there's any smart people out there please let me know what I'm talking about um, because I, I don't know what it's called, but it's this idea that you put a certain amount of fuel into a system. You're not getting an equal amount of energy out, you see? So there's some sort of loss that happens, and I don't know what it's called. I don't know if that's part of entropy or what. Uh, some engineer out there can probably help us out. Um, I think most of you are smarter than me, so please help me with this one. Um, put it down in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. But it's that you have a certain amount of fuel. You know, let's say you have 100 pounds of fuel, you put it into the system, you only get 99, 99 pounds or whatever of energy out. Where does that other one go? It gets lost somewhere. It's an imperfect system. There's some kind of, a, of an energy loss, right, through the process. And that's what this is kind of talking about. And that's why the 10 of wands is in the position of the difficulty because, um, Sometimes we expect the results to match the effort, but it doesn't work that way. And that's, so that's the difficulty for you, okay? The, the difficulty is us uh, operating at 100%, but we only get, you know, we only get 99% of the, of the return on it, okay? It's kind of like you work for eight hours straight, but the company only pays you for seven hours and 59 minutes. You're like, where did that other minute go? Right? And this is one of those facts of life. I don't know why it works that way. I think it's thermodynamics, but I'm not that smart. Um, so I feel that there is, um, it feels like there's an unlimited amount of this energy in you, that you feel so enthusiastic, you feel invincible, you feel immortal. But the Ten of Pentacles reminds us to end the death card, of course, reminds us that our bodies are gonna wear out way before our hearts do. You know what I mean? Way before our creative force does. You know? And I think of um, the elderly people that I know. You know? My, my grandmother, she's 95 years old. And she'll say, gosh, I, I wish, I have, I, there's so much I want to do in life, but my body just won't let me. You know? So she puts in all of this effort to do something and she gets an, a disproportionate amount of, of results from it. You see what I mean? And I think that's the difficulty. And I mean, that's a, that's a good problem to have, right? I would rather my body wear out way before my, my will does, you know? So I, I feel like there is, uh, there's an obstacle here with this, with this 10 uh, of wands. Okay, and I think once we get a little bit of a taste of this kind of this enthusiasm, it's kind of like I, I wish I had a, a hundred more years to to work to do this, you know, and that that to me is really that's really a, a, a vital energy. That's really this a kind of love 
a kind of passion for life where it's like, ah, I, I wish it didn't have to end. I wish I can add, you know, uh, so much more time onto this thing. Let's look at the final card on the path of the serpent. At the eight of, of course, it's the eight of one. A lot of fiery energy here. Um, Cancer, you may really find it useful to go watch the Scorpio reading. Okay, this is the only major arcana card that we have here today, and that's a Scorpio death card. You might want to watch this week's Scorpio reading. Okay, you might find it useful. Uh, the eight of wands here at the end, final outcome is going to be, yeah, we're going to realize that we're going to have at the end of our life, at the end of this project even, or the end of this era for you, you're going to have a lot of leftover energy, you know? Um, this energy has to go somewhere and it's kind of like that's just a, that's the little bit that the machine kind of eats, you know? Um, so I feel, and I know I, I've, I'm kind of going backwards on my proportions here, because if we're putting in 100 and we only get 99, well then we're kind of, we're not left over with any extra. Um, but I feel like this is, what I mean is that the, the physical thing that you're doing, the work that you're doing there is gonna come to a natural end. That's part of this death card, part of that 10 of pentacles, but you're still gonna have all this fire and all this enthusiasm and you're gonna want more and more and more. So I think that this is you then kind of finding the next thing that's going to really motivate you. Okay. Um, so, you know, if this is you're, you're growing a garden or something, you know, well, eventually, you know, that plant is going to, it's going to grow. You're going to have the fruit and the plant's going to kind of wither away and die unless it's a, unless it's a perennial, I don't know, then it's just going to keep going, but you got to wait till next year. Um, but this is a, an abundance of this creative energy, this driving energy. And I think that you have a lot of things you want to do in life, you know. And so part of the, if there is a problem for you right now, part of this is that you have so much power and your aura is so bright and you're just so on fire right now that you can't possibly live long enough to do everything you want. And that's kind of bittersweet, you know, but it's a good problem to have. I'd rather have too much energy, too much enthusiasm and not enough things to do than the other way around, you know? So I feel like something really has changed in you. There's like a, a switch has been flipped. Very, very powerful. Um, and maybe with this, this card too, it's, um, it's showing us that we do need a little bit of focus, a little bit of direction. Maybe this is too much of this creative energy dissipating. And maybe that's where it gets lost in the machine, you know, the thermodynamics or whatever. So maybe we need to focus it a little bit more so that we don't have a, a lot of wasted energy. This card is, I think, a callback. Because see, we have the Eight of Cups, Eight of Pentacles. Now we've got the Eight of Wands. Think about how much of this creative vital energy we're reclaiming when we choose to direct it toward our own healing and our own well-being. Because we waste a lot of energy here we put a lot of energy into this, and then at the end of the day, we have even less energy. Okay, this is just, it's diminishing. The more we put energy into it, the more it just eats that energy and we get nothing back. But the Eight of Pentacles, the more energy you put into your well-being, the more energy it will give you back. So this is more of a direct system here. The more energy we put into this, um, it kind of starts generating its own energy and that feeds back into what we got there. So I think that there's a, a big clue there for you and also in the Scorpio reading, okay? Let's look at this mystery card. I know we're getting a little long in the tooth here. Um, no pun intended. So what is the mystery card gonna be? Well, I kind of feel like we need some water energy. Some good nine, 10 of cups water energy. Mm, a three of cups maybe. Um, hopefully not an eight of swords. We have all the eights here. I don't know if, maybe. Um, if you have a prediction, put it in the comments. We got a eight of wands again. So this, to me, it's a confirmation of what I said, that this is energy dissipating, going in many different directions, not really focused, but now everything's going in the same direction. So it's like we've pulled energy that we've been wasting over here. We've straightened it all out so it's all going toward the same thing. So now it's not like you've got 99% of your energy going this way, but you're losing 1% because of something over here. 
Now everything has been reclaimed. Everything has been um, reoriented toward what you're what you're deciding on. You know, and um, I think the the system's more efficient this way. There's less loss of that energy when it's focused and directed. Now, this is very interesting. I like this. I like this energy for you. Very very powerful. I'm interested to see how you're going to use all of this power. Yeah. We're going to do an extended reading too. If you want to stick around, there is a link up top. There's one down below. New readings for Cancer, Tuesday, Friday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.